Okay, so now we're going to look at some discrete math functions that we can do in MATLAB. And again, honestly, the best way to get comfortable with these functions is just to play with them. So even though you're like, just started this video and it seems counterintuitive or whatever, you should pause the video, go try it out and see if this actually works. Okay, so um, like you could go to factor and remember if you're not really sure how to figure out what factor does, what you can do is you can come in here and say help factor. And it's like, here's stuff, you can't see it. Um, help factor. So if we look at this, we can see all the different things going on with factor. And it's like, here's a simple sub approach and I don't really care, blah, 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 blah. But there, it returns a vector containing the prime factors of n. So I would kind of expect that if I say factor um, six, it comes back with two and three. So in fact, the factors of six are two and three. All right, so for each one of these, you should go spend some time with it, play around with it, um, put in some inputs, see if you get the outputs that you would expect and do that kind of thing. Um, so I'm gonna do this down here. So I'm gonna start off with some discrete math. All right, so what are these gonna be that I'm gonna look at? Do -do! I'm gonna look at these, all right. So factor, pretty sure I know what that does. But let's try some different ones. Let's try something that's prime. Do I get what I expect? Yeah. So it actually doesn't come up with the one. That's important. So, um, because one's not prime, so <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, let's say if I do something like uh, 12. That's not a 12. So 12 is 2, 2, and 3. So it's not going to actually come and say 6 and 2, or 4 and 3, or 2 and 6, or whatever. It's just going to come back with a prime factorization. So kind of like if you did number trees back in like grade school or something, um, where you like came up with all the different values. Um, don't know what I'm talking about. So like if you had to do 12, you'd be like 12. Well, that's 6 and 2. And then 6 can go into 2 and 3. And then that means that I have 2, 2, because that's prime of 3, so you have 2 times 2 times 3. That's what MATLAB's doing. Okay. So, factor. GCD. What do you think GCD is? Well, again, you want to go in here. Help. GCD. And it's like, um, greatest common divisor. And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember doing that in third grade, too. So, like, these are all discrete math functions. They're kind of like third grade functions, except you can do really cool stuff with them in discrete math. So GCD, oops, the greatest common divisor. Um, so that would be like the, like if I have, like if I'm simplifying fractions. So if I'm simplifying fractions and I have something like um, 12 over 3, um, the greatest common divisor of the two of them is 3. So I could divide the top and the bottom by 3, and then I get my reduced fraction 4 over 1. Or if I had you know, um, 33 over 22, I can say, well, my greatest common divisor is 11 because that's what I would use to um, make my little function thingy go down and get that to three halves, my fraction thing go down to get to three halves. So GCD, so if I put in GCD of 33 and 22, I sure hope I get 11. Yep, I get 11. So there you go, um, LCM. It's another one of those um, third grade, fourth grade things. I keep saying third grade and fourth grade. I don't know when I learned this, but LCM, that's going to be your least common multiple. So if you're making notes for yourself, GCD is greatest common divisor, um, least common multiple. So for least common multiple, that would be the thing like if you're um, trying to find a, a common denominator, I guess. So, um, so if I had like, um, seven fourths plus, um, I don't know, six over five, then I could go, well, um, not that. I could say that the least common multiple between these two guys, um, would really be 20. The least common multiple would be 20. So I would, I would go like this. And so the first one is top, multiply the top and bottom by five multiply the top and bottom by four, and then I could go ahead and I could add my, my two fractions and get whatever that was with the least common multiple. The least common multiple isn't always whenever you multiply them together. So say I had seven twelfths plus four ninths, and you probably remember doing stuff like this 
So this has a three and a three, and this has a three and a four. So to make these even, this guy needs an extra three, and this guy needs an extra four. So the least common multiple is 36. And I could add those fractions now, like, like that. Y'all remember doing stuff like that? Maybe, hopefully. So if I look for the least common multiple of 12 and 9, I really hope I get 36. Um, LCM 12 and 9, do I get 36? Yay! All right. Rats. Rats is short for rational. And that one's just kind of fun. Um, maybe you can't necessarily guess what it does. Um, it uses to display rational approximations to the elements of x. So um, if I put in rats 1.5, it's going to come back as three halves. It's going to tell me that it's three halves. If I try rats of pi, does that work? No, pi. Pi is lowercase. There, it's 33 over 113. 335 over 355. Yeah, that's 3.14, whatever. So um, rats just gives me a rational approximation. So if I ask for rats of 0.6, 7, Hopefully it gives me two thirds. There we go. Okay, so rats just gives me the um, fractional thingy. Factorial? Yes, yes, maybe you remember factorial. Um, factorial is a thingy where you have um, the little exclamation point. So the factorial would be like six factorial. It's like six, yay! And it's six times five times four times three times two times one. So that's like, I think it's 120. It's something like that's 10, and that's 12, and that's some other number, like 72, so 720. I don't think it was 620. Can I not do math? 720. Well, I guess there's one way to find out, right? I have the power, so what is the factorial of 6? 720. Okay, good. So I did that. Um, I think the factorial of 0 is defined as 1. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Um, not that you necessarily need to know this, who knows, maybe you do, but the factorial of zero is one. And I think they just define that as the identity. I'm not really sure how that math works. I am sure at some point I did, and I just don't remember anymore. N choose K. Um, these are those weird problems where if I have five different people, well, I don't know, maybe that's not exactly a good ex example. If I have five different people, how many different ways can I put them into committees of three? Um, so the n choose k, the idea behind that is say I had, um, let's just say I had three people and I wanted to choose, so I have three and I want to choose two. So I want to basically, how many different ways can I distribute three people in groups of two? Be like, okay, well there's a b, and there's a c, and there's b, c. And I think that's it. So we say n choose k for two choose Sorry, if we choose two is equal to three. And I think I think that's what MATLAB gets us. Let's check. That's a great way to find out. So if I go n choose k, if I have three, choose two. Yep, there's three different groups. I'm pointing to my screen like you can see this. Alright, let's try something a little bit more complicated. So take a minute, and again, you should totally pause your video and try this out on your own and see if you can get it to work. Say I have A, B, C, D, E, and I want to choose groups of three. All right, so A, B, C, D, E, choose groups of three. All right, so seriously, pause this. Make sure you can get all of them. Um, this is important because you have to know how a function works, and if you can't reproduce what you expect to get the function down on paper, how in the world do you expect to actually be able to code it? Okay, you don't just code something and hope it works. You should be able to work it out on paper first so that you can get a reliable solution. Besides that, how are you going to know if your answer is right if you can't work it out on paper? You want to get it working and then use your computer to solve the super, super hard problems, but you at least need to be able to prove it on the small, simple cases. So hopefully you took a chance to go do that. But if I'm going to choose three, I have ABC, ABD, ABE, I have ACD, ACE, and A, D, E, and then I have B, C, D, B, C, E, and B, D, E, and then I have C, D, E, I think that's it, is that it? Did I get all of them? B, C, D, B, C, E, B, 
Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I think that's it. So I think the five choose three should be equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five choose three. Is that equal to ten? So Yay! Okay. So again, the idea behind this is um how many groups of size K can we get? from a population of size n. Okay, so that's what n choose k is. Now this is really important because you might be asking this already. Well, isn't CBA a different group than ABC? So like ABC, CBA, like what if we were, um, the, like the classic example is what if these are like people on a committee and you have a president and you have a vice president and you have a treasurer? Well then clearly, these people care, and so out of ABC, you'd have ABC, but you'd also have ACB, and you'd also have um, BCA, and you'd also have BAC, and you'd also have CBA, and CAB, and all of those would count, <laughs> alright? So these are actually, and for each one of these, you would have one, two, three, four, five um, additional, so basically, I think it's going to be times six. It's going to give you all the different options because I would have, yeah, I'm almost positive that's right. But um, we'll find out in a second. But whenever we talk just about um, N choose K like this, the specific word that you're looking for here is combination. Okay? And combination order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. My cursive is terrible. <laughs> order doesn't matter. I don't know what that word is supposed to be. There we go. All right. Whenever I'm talking about um, A, B, C, and all of these different options here, then this is called a permutation where order does matter. Okay. So um, basically, if I have if you really want to know, so the, the n choose k, the combination n choose k is equal to um, n factorial, the actual formula is n minus k factorial um, k factorial. Um, the permutation n choose k is just this guy. Okay. And um, so basically what we've done in the combination is we've divided by um, k factorial. So we've taken out all those extras. So they're basically the same except that we've taken out those extras. In our case, what was k? k was 3. So 3 factorial is 6. So yeah, they're off by a factor of 6. Okay, so that's really what we're looking at is whenever um, we're doing this in MATLAB, if you're using n choose k, you need to understand what that is. Is That's a combination, and so the order doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll save this. Okay. And if you wanted to check, you could see that you get the same answer if I say the factorial of 5 divided by, and we haven't really gotten into this yet, but the factorial, let me just copy this and put it in here so you can have it. Factorial of 5 divided by the factorial of 5 minus 3 times the factorial of 3. And that actually gives me the same answer. So, so that's what, that's what n choose k is. All right. Then we have primes. Um, that's kind of fun. Just try a number, see what you get. So you say primes, 17. This actually gives you all of the numbers below 17 that are prime, inclusive of 17. 17 and below gives you all the prime numbers. So it's pretty common for, you know, you to get a question like, you know, where are all the primes below 15? Or what is the output of this code, primes 15? And you're like, oh, it's... All those numbers. So 2 is prime, but notice that 1 is not prime. So I'm going to say um, lists all the primes less than or, or equal to x. And I'm going to make another note so I don't forget that says 1 is not prime. So, um, so there. Um, is prime, you can probably guess what that one does, is prime 5, comes back with a 1, and you're like, okay, what does that mean? Is prime 6, comes back with a 0. Um, so basically what is prime 
does is it's going to return a um, returns a one if something is prime and zero if it isn't um, because one is true and zero is false so because one is true and zero is false so there so if I go is prime one hopefully it comes back no good all right it says one is not prime awesome so let's make sure we cover all these questions. So what is the difference between a permutation and a combination? Um, we'll put our answers over here. What is the difference between a permutation and a combination? A uh, permutation, oops, is where order matters. For combination, it doesn't. All right, is n choose k a permutation or a combination? It's a combination. How do you calculate the number of subgroups when order matters? Use a permutation. Um, you can either use the formula, so you can either do, what was it? The formula is n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, or, or you can do n choose k and then multiply by k factorial. Because that would, you know how they're different by, for to get n choose k, we divide it by a factorial from the permutation one. So if you just multiply by a factorial, you can get the permutation. So there's two different ways to get it. Now you can't actually put the exclamation point into MATLAB. So let me write that in more MATLAB code. So it would be um, factorial n divided by factorial. 